Hello and welcome to our today's webinar about the application of computational fluid dynamics to evaluate pedestrian wind comfort. My name is Milad and I will host our today's session and guide you through the world of CFD and how it can be applied for building projects in pedestrian comfort. Uh, I'm working at SimScale as a product marketing manager and as a part of my role I'm organizing and conducting on a regular basis workshops, webinars and other learning events. I've studied mechanical engineering with a focus on numerical simulation and during the last 10 years I was able to work in a lot of different environments uh, where simulation was used including motorsports, automotive and aerospace. And yes, first of all Let's take a look at our today's agenda. Uh, we will start with a rough overview about the, the benefits of simulation. So we will quickly discuss what the great thing about simulation is and how it can contribute to faster, cheaper and more efficient building design process. After that, I will quickly introduce you to SimScale. Uh, since SimScale is the world's first cloud-based simulation platform, so we will just very quickly talk about what cloud-based simulation means, what you need to be able to use it, and after that we will talk to talk, uh, we will start to talk about our today's topic and dive into the world of wind uh, comfort analyzers. Uh, therefore, I will present you some simulation cases we have prepared, so we'll take a look at some simulation results and try to understand how we can use these results for our development process. And uh, we will also take a, a look at the workflow and quickly set up such a simulation on our own using the SimScale platform. All right, so let's start and talk about the benefits of simulation. In the case... Uh, you have a question. Don't be shy. You can actually uh, ask questions all the time using our uh, question toolbox. It's part of GoToWebinar, the software we use to, to provide you with the live stream of this webinar. And I will try to answer all the questions on the fly or latest during our Q&A. All right, so let's get started. And first of all, um, just to make sure everybody knows what we are talking about, um, simulation is a kind of, of computer technology which helps us to perform virtual experiments which does not need any kind of physical prototype. And there are a lot of different simulation tools. You can do fluid flow simulation which is uh, about everything involving the motion of fluid substances which is called CFD. And especially when it comes to the AEC industry, so the architecture engineering construction industry, uh, it is um, there is a, a or there is a, a high bandwidth of different application where you can use this uh, fluid dynamic simulation to optimize the performance of your building. And actually, um, if we think about about today's uh, topic, you can use CFD to analyze um, the, the wind comfort and to predict wind load. So everything related to building aerodynamics can be simulated using CFD. And uh, we are not only limited to building aerodynamics, we can also do internal flows including HVAC systems or single parts, so you can really simulate single ducting elements of the HVAC system inside a building and also the whole system uh, uh, together. Uh, this kind of simulation can also be used to improve energy efficiencies, especially when you're talking about natural ventilation. CFD can help you to understand how your building aerodynamics or how the flow around the building is interacting with, with the flow inside the building and for sure you can not only optimize your building with it, uh, 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 in terms of, of let's say building performance but also in, in, uh, in terms of efficiency but also in uh, yes terms of, of comfort like you can do a thermal comfort optimization uh, and even uh, everything around air quality control and contamination uh, independent if it's uh, if you want to understand or to get an idea over let's say the CO concentration in a parking garage but you can also uh, use CFD for let's say industrial pollutions and uh, industrial pollution removal systems. So what you can obviously see there is a high bandwidth of different applications and 
lot of benefits which uh, are created based off them, especially for the AEC industry. And if you think about AEC, um, I mean, the big difference, for example, between a an, an building and a car is that the car is engineered a lot of times and then you go into a mass production, while for the building you only have one chance. You, usually you just build one prototype. And the big danger when it comes to building project is that uh, at the very early that at the very uh, early design stage you do wrong decisions, for example, and then at the end when you're going to these build the building, it will become very expensive. And the great thing about CFD is that you can not only use it to optimize these five points I showed you, but you can also use it from the very first uh, uh, moment you start to conceptualize your building. Well, and now let's talk a little about, about SimScale. And from what I've told you so far, you must think simulation or CFD is such a great tool. It can help me to improve uh, uh, my building uh, in terms of energy efficiency, thermal comfort, and so on. And so why is it only used by a minority of engineers? And that's actually a very good question because Simulation has a lot of advantages, but uh, until today it's only used by around five personal engineers. So what's the reason? That's a very good question. Actually, if you think about it, it uh, you will end with three main reasons which are right now limiting the application of simulation. The very first is related to financial aspects. So if you want to get started with traditional simulation tools, you need to, to, to buy the software, you need to buy dedicated hardware. We're not talking about a workstation, but really about a 19-inch rack with a lot of servers. So you have a very big initial financial commitment. And even if you just want to start with, a, let's say, a small simulation team, one guy, uh, you will uh, face initial investments around 60, 70,000 euro. And that was the reason why a lot of people, a lot of companies and engineers are not using it so far, because in the end of the day, you, you need to be able to save the amount of money you are investing for the simulation technology. And in a lot of cases, this is not possible. And very much related to this is what we also call, for example, the, uh, the, the access barrier. So usually simulation tool requires a lot of a complex infrastructure um, consisting of, uh, let's say, a, sim a computing cluster, which is used to perform the simulations. You need dedicated machines for visualization, a license server, and so on and so on. So there was a big overhead. And actually, you need to build up a whole teams of simulation specialists and IT specialists before you were able to carry your first simulation. And the last reason, in my point of view, that's maybe the most important reason, or so-called barrier, is the knowledge barrier. So traditional simulation tools, on-premise simulation tools, are designed for simulation experts and not for designers. And this is why four years ago or five years ago SimScale was founded, the first web-based and cloud-based simulation platform. And the idea of, of SimScale is to enable every engineer and designer in the world to easily test uh, performance and optimize durability of, of their designs. Uh, using cloud-based simulation and really the aim is to make simulation accessible to everyone and that's a big, uh, really the big thing because it's the first cloud-based simulation platform so first of all it's really fast and easy so you don't need to install any software you don't need to buy a dedicated hardware the only thing you need to access the unlimited power of computational fluid dynamics is a standard web browser and a working internet connection and you can use, set up, uh, analyze your simulations on every design, uh, on every device, independent if it's a laptop, a workstation, or a tablet, and independent from where you are. And besides that, SimScale is an all-in-one tool. So today the focus is on CFD, but actually SimScale supports all major disciplines of simulation, including structural mechanics, fluid dynamics, thermodynamics, and multiphysics. And this is also, I think, a big, big deal because usually you need to buy every module separately. And with SimScale, it's like one version for everyone. Everybody has access to all solvers, to all kinds of physics, and to, let's say, uh, the computing power through the cloud. And now let's maybe talk about the most important thing. 
the fact that SimScale is actually free of cost. So SimScale comes with two pricing mo models or pricing options. One is our community plan, which is completely for free. You even don't need the credit card. You just need to register yourself and once you've created your account, you can actually use all features of SimScale for free. The only difference between our free community plan and our paid professional plans are that the professional plans provide you with the possibility of to create public projects, while projects of, of public users, of community users, are available to all other users by standard. And besides the three, let's say, major reasons, there are a lot of other uh, good reasons why to use SimScale, not of other unique things. So SimScale comes with uh, real-time support. You can reach out to our support and engineering team through chat, phone, email. And we're not only providing support even for free users, but also consultancy, free webinars, and dedicated trainings. SimScale and uh, also comes with a high level of security. Usually a lot of people are concerned when it when they hear it's cloud-based because they are uh, worried what happens to the data. And we have a, a, a quite unique, uh, um, let's say, methodology to protect your data. So first of all, that all the data is encrypted two times. So even uh, SimScale, SimScale support team, cannot access your data uh, without your, your approval. And Besides the security aspect, SimScale also opens a lot of new ways for collaboration. And independent if you want to collaborate with other users on our platform using the community, but you can also work together with, with your colleagues. And soon we will also announce some really nice collaboration features for enterprise customers. All right. And Maybe just because some people already asked me, so SimScale is not only used in the AEC industry, but actually SimScale and simulation tools are used by, com by over 120,000 users worldwide in basically every, uh, prof every profession, including also electronic design. We have a lot of customers designing um, the cases of the electronic parts or using SimScale to, to optimize the layout of the PCB board from the field of energy generation, independent if it's a fluid flow simulation to optimize the efficiency of, of, of the, the blades, uh, but also uh, you can also use it to, to optimize structural parts, for example, of a windmill. Uh, SimScale is also used uh, by automotive and aerospace suppliers in healthcare, machinery, and a lot of other industries. I see we already have a first question by uh, David Holzklar, and he wants to know where to where do you get SimScale. And David, that's quite easy. You just need to go on SimScale.com, and I will show you the details in the next couple of minutes. And now let's talk about today's topic and talk about wind comfort and wind engineering. And as I mentioned, uh, we can use CFD. So we can use numerical uh, simulations to predict the, the flow field around the building. So we can use it as a kind of virtual wind tunnel. And based on the results, we can get an idea and evaluate uh, the pedestrian comforts in urban areas and analyze the wind effects. And on the left side, you can see a screenshot, an image created out of a simulation uh, which was performed with SimScale. And here you can see both streamlines, which are showing the downstream and the wake uh, behind the building, as well as uh, slices representing the contours of velocity. And first of all, let's try to understand why and when safety of pedestrians and wind comfort can be a big issue. And right now on the slide, you can see a video uh, which was recorded some years ago showing some pedestrian which try to walk on the heavy wind. And as you can see, it's nearly impossible for them even to move against the wind. And this is actually a phenomenon which is not as rare as you might think because of two reasons. First of all, um, as you all know, uh, through the global warming, we have increasing wind speeds and also the, the chance is higher of, of having high wind speeds. But also we get more and more urban areas. The, the density, let's say the building density in, in big cities is increasing more and more. 
and uh, this let's say high building with complex shapes uh, can uh, massively influence uh, the, the wind and uh, this can result in, in flow regimes like here which are super critical and dangerous for pedestrians and uh, there is a so-called Buffon wind force scale uh, which is used to characterize wind. And actually we have uh, different categories uh, and there are more than eight. Actually I think there are 12 but only the first eight are really relevant for what we want to do. And the way they are working is actually that they measure the wind speed above a, defi de a defined height, in this case 1.75 meter and as, as high as the number is, as, as strong as the wind and you can see uh, we have up to wind speeds up to 20 meters per second is, which is literally 60 meter, which is uh, literally uh, 70 kilometers per hour uh, and uh, it's, it's this, if you have wind like this this is really a problem so this will break off trees and yes and now let's take a look at different kind of wind effects which can happen and which can be simulated using CFD. Uh, so the first effect, and you maybe heard about it, is a so-called Venturi effect. The Venturi effect is the effect which is also leveraged in other uh, uh, industries, for example when it comes to uh, aircraft or car design, at some point you use the Venturi effect, and the Venturi effect describes what happens is the uh, um, uh, wind pressure change and the velocity increases and this is the effect for uh, which is related to the uh, law of Bernoulli and if you just think about it for example here we have a reduction of the cross section and now the air coming from here this air is like going inside this, this reduced cross section and since we have the, the, the um, conservation of mass, uh, which means that air cannot be destroyed or generated, or mass cannot be destroyed or generated, it means that the flow velocity needs to increase if it wants to pass this uh, small area. And the energy needed to accelerate the wind, this is uh, taken from the pressure, so the Venturi effect describes when you have a, a constricted uh, uh, area and the air gets accelerated while the, the uh, pressure is dropping. And if you think about it, uh, just take a look at our legend here. So um, blue means we have a very light wind, feel, uh, wind velocity of 1.5 meters, six, it's six meters per, uh, red is six meters per second. And you can really see how massively the air was accelerated and this has resulted downstream in a kind of fast air jet. Another effect which you can see uh, a lot of times uh, in urban areas uh, is related to flow separations. And the reason is, uh, is that um, uh, flow is that a flow, especially boundary layer, which is not able, let's say, to run against the high pressure gradients will separate. And this effect is known, for example, when it comes to to wing design and airfoil design, that you also have flow separation if the angle of attack, for example, is too high or the curvature of your profile. And then the, the air on the suction side, on the low pressure uh, side, does not have enough energy, not kinetic energy to, to run, let's say, run against the pressure gradient and the flow will separate. And that's the same thing here. A building in a free stream can also act like a wing or like a bluff body and at a bluff body you will get a high pressure and low pressure zone and this can and once for example you have a sharp corner the air won't be able to to follow this, this sharp corner and you will get the flow separation which you can see here for example this blue one and we already talked about the, the jet fan effect uh, of 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 uh, related to the Venturi effect but another effect which can uh, happen uh, especially when you have a lot of a lot of, of, of high and big buildings is the j jets at passage and this effect is related to the fact that we have two buildings and we have 
a kind of opening. In this case, it's like um, uh, it's open the building at the ground level, and you can see that as a result we get a kind of wake behind the first building, but where the openings are we have this fast jet, and actually here we have a wind speed difference of 12 meters per second, and just imagine what happens if a pedestrian quickly walks from this blue region to this red region, he will just get blown away. And this is also a fact which uh, can be very dangerous, and all of these three effects can be uh, simulated using CFD on the SimScale platform. And now I would like to provide you an experimental validation we did on SimScale using a, a validation case uh, provided by the Architecture Institute of Japan. And now let's take a look at the case. So we actually prepared two cases. Uh, the first case is called Case B and it's about a steady state turbulent fluid flow around a high rise building in Niigata it's a town in Japan and here's the important thing is this is really just like a simplified case we have one tall big building and a lot of small simplified low rise houses and the first very important thing is that we can see the boundary layer profile here so this is the velocity against uh, the ground distance and this is a um, the uh, kinetic energy, kinetic turbulent energy against the wind distance. So these two plots are describing my atmospheric boundary layer profile. And we just uploaded the geometry to SimScale, created a mesh around the buildings, and um, we used so-called layer elements to, to properly capture uh, the flow near the ground. So here's this flat elements. And we also made sure that between the buildings there was a kind of refinement that, to ensure that at least there are 12 cells in these channels. And now let's take a look at the results. So this is a slice representing uh, the, the contours of, of normalized velocity. So it's dimensionless basically. And now we can see the flow pattern. And we also had some defined control points, up to 78 points. And what we actually did, we normalized, the, the, as I mentioned, the velocity using the reference velocity of 6.65 of, uh, uh, meters at the building height. And then we took a look at the change of the normalized velocity at the slice. And here we can see for different point numbers, we have plotted the experimental results in blue versus the uh, simulation results in, in, in orange. And you can see that for sure there is some difference, but the trend is really the right one. And that's a very important thing about simulation. Simulation is not very strong when it comes to calculate the absolute number with a very high precis uh, precision, but whenever you're mainly interested in relative change and you want to do studies, that's when CFD comes at life. And we also did the same simulation with a, a different degree of the wind direction, and you can see we did like a middle and a, and a really a 45 uh, degree angle, and you can see that independent from the degree, Actually, for higher degrees, even the accuracy increases. And also, what is very important, you can really see that it's like we have a lot of changes, and these fluctuations between the points are really resolved very well. Now, let's take a look at some streamlines, and that's the other great thing about simulation. On the one hand, it provides you with numbers which you can use, uh, like wind speeds or forces acting on, on persons of sets, but on the other hand, it also allows you to not understand what is happening or why it is happening. For example, by visualizing uh, the flow structure. And here we can see like uh, uh, flow separations, etc. Um, yes. And we also prepared another case. We validated like the big AIG case E, which is the steady state study of a turbulent flow in a complex city with a lot of simple buildings in an urban area. And um, we actually created a very big domain of one kilometer in X and Z direction, 250 meter of height. And uh, meshed it with the proper mesh, 
So this is our case. Again, we defined uh, the, the atmospheric boundary layer profile by defining the velocity profile and the kinetic turbulent energy profile. And actually, we're interested in that red building in this city. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at the mesh. And again, we use refined elements to resolve the small changes in the near of the ground and between the buildings. And this is really very important because in the end of the day, what the simulation tool is doing, it's calculating one velocity pressure value for every center of the cell. So the number of cells or the density of cells is corresponding to the local accuracy of your simulation. And this mesh or this simulation ended with a mesh of 30 million elements, which is quite large, so you cannot handle it on a laptop or on a small workstation anymore. Then we started to validate again the results. So one of the first things we did, we again selected some validation points, which you can see here, and plotted again the relative velocity ratio for different points. And again, you can see that it's uh, not all the values are 100% predicted, uh, not that all values are predicted 100% completely, but at least the trend is very, very good and the, the relative changes are considered very good. Again, here we can see a visualization, which can be very helpful not only to understand what is happening, but also, you know, to convince customers and to show which kind of technology you're using. And again, we can like really simulate all the interaction between the building and the wind and we can even use this for example to estimate a kind of facet loads when we're interested in, in, in other aspects of wind engineering. Uh, now I would like to present you with a study which shows how you can basically use SimScale the very hands-on way and this is a typical project used by our customers in the field of wind comfort and uh, it's about um, a restaurant and you want to use natural barriers to increase the wind comfort uh, on this dining garden area. So this is our case and first of all let's switch now here. Here you can to the SimScale platform. As I mentioned everything I do here it's happening in the web browser. This is a, a project was shared with me by my colleague Pavel and the first thing I can do is I can open it. And now we we'll switch to full screen, but remember, everything we do here, it's happening inside the web browser. So the first step is to import a CAD model. Here we made sure that it's a solid model and actually we, we structured the model into different solids. Then the next step is to, to create a mesh. And the great thing at SimScale is that you can actually use full automatic as well as manual meshing options. In this case, we did manual meshing. We defined that a bounding box around it some refinements and this is the final result, the final mesh. Let me just hide some of the walls and then yeah you can see it. The next step then is to set up the simulation. First of all you have to choose which kind of simulation you want to run which kind of fluid substance is involved in our case air and then you actually just define inlet, outlets and the boundary conditions and the simulation then is performed in the cloud which is super fast so in this time it just took six minutes since it's what it performed on 96 processors and for sure you can also visualize your results in real time on your web browser And this can take, depending on the internet connection, up to just to one minute or something like that. And this is, for example, the result of the simulation. Here you can see the building and this is a slice representing the velocity. And we can easily move this slice, for example, up. or down. You can see the effect of the boundary layer by the way. So here the flow is quite slow. Yep. 
you can for, also, for sure also change the field you want to represent. However, let's get back to our slides. So we basically just simplified the model, did some refinements inside the garden area and the building surface, and uh, we also created basically two mesh, one for this version, the initial version, one for the first design suggestion. Then we set it up the simulation and we defined a kind of a matrix, what we want to measure so we and how we want to measure it and we want to achieve an airspeed while seated below 0 0.2 meters. We have uh, located some probes inside the garden and for modeling the trees we use the so-called Darcy porosity model which means we are we have Still, we have a simplified shape of the trees, but we are considering uh, the, the porous effect of the, the, the tree itself. And here you can see for both versions, first of all, the velocity distribution, and you can see that the flow velocity massively drops inside the dining area once you install these trees. If we zoom a little bit, you, you can also see why. It's because of the wake generated by the trees, and you can see how much the wind speed dropped uh, uh, for the different control points for the version with trees. So this are all different points and you can see the related wind speed and we want to be at least below 0 0.22 so we want to be somewhere here which is already a massive improvement. We can also visualize the flow Yes. Um, we already synced it the live demonstration. I showed you how to to work with SimScale. Just again to make sure you have three steps: the cat import, you set up the simulation, and then you can do the result analysis. And yes, that's basically from my side. And now we have time for the Q and A. And we already have some questions, so let me start with the question of Asen. And Asen wants to know if there is a guide available on how to use SimScale for new users. As in for sure, there are different possibilities to get started. Uh, maybe let's switch to the platform and discuss some of them. So the first thing you can do whenever you're in SimScale, you can go on Help, Tutorials, and then you can choose one of our three interactive tutorials to get started with different simulation disciplines we have. Don't be confused, I know you are maybe not interested in simulating water flow inside the pipe, but these tutorials are just to make you, let's say, familiar with the SimScale environment and the general CFD process, and then we also have a lot of public projects and tutorials, for example, about WinComfor. So just go on public projects, look for WinComfor, and for example, there you go. And you can see this project was already copied. Uh, by 25 persons. Um, the next question is by uh, Shushoban San, and he wants to know from the mesh I showed, it seems like since they can handle non confirmable mesh. Can you verify that? Uh, yes, uh, Sushoban, that's a good question. First of all, um, SimScale actually comes with different meshing technologies uh, for different applications. So we have TED meshing. We have also non confidential uh, hex meshing, and actually for CFD we we uh, support both snappy hex mesh, which is creating unstructured hexahedral mesh, and the TED mesh, which is creating a structured mesh. However, you can also upload some some meshes, but uh, uh, which kind of external generated mesh you can use highly depends on your solver. So I would appreciate if you could send me some more details on chat, and I would try to answer the question. Uh, based on or for the solver you're interested in. Matthias Nielsen wants to know how long the simulation time was for the validation case. We can easily take a look, so let's uh, just go back to my dashboard. Here is the AIG e case. Let's just open it take a look. So for the simulation took 4200 minutes which is a lot. I think it's uh, even more than one day and uh, we used uh, 
96 processors so you can imagine how long it would take on a, on a standard computer workstation. The great thing is that you can start all simulation at the same time. And Matthias also wants to know if we can uh, also do initial co uh, annual conclusions with wind statistics to create, let's say, um, NEN 8000. 100. Matthias, are you speaking about this wind code where you use uh, the statistics to, to calculate um, the metrics? I think, yes, we have some customers doing this, for example, with the Euro code. Uh, but Matthias, I would ask you, if possible, reach out to me by email. I will send you my email address um, on the chat. And uh, let's 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 maybe talk next week. Uh, maybe we can do a validation project together. And this is something I have to 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 uh, uh, find out. So please send me an email, and I will reach out to you. All right. It seems like I answered all the questions. Uh, yes. Yeah, thank you very much for being with me or being with us. It was a Great pleasure for me to be your today's host. In the case, case you have question, you can also reach out to me by email. And yes, I wish you all a wonderful end of the week. Have a nice day and see you soon. Bye.